Suspend a weight by a string, and you have a pendulum. The pendulum would swing back and forth indefinitely if it weren't for friction and air resistance forces that slow it down. How long it takes a pendulum to swing back and forth depends on only two things, the length of the string and the acceleration due to gravity. The longer the string, the longer the pendulum's period, which is the time it takes to swing back and forth once. It's gravity that's pulling the pendulum downward, so it makes sense that the weaker the force of gravity, the less the acceleration, hence the longer time it takes to swing back and forth. The same pendulum swinging on the moon would take longer to swing back and forth. But you know, on a given planet, all objects fall with the same acceleration regardless of mass. That's why the mass of the pendulum has no effect on the period. Swing a pendulum at the North Pole. Inertia keeps it swinging in the same direction, even as Earth rotates beneath it once every 24 hours. Because motion is relative, from your point of view, sitting at the North Pole, it looks like the pendulum is shifting around once every 24 hours. But you don't have to be at the North Pole to see this effect, as museum goers at lower latitudes can attest. The pendulum nicely illustrates what is known as oscillating motion, or harmonic motion, which is when something is moving back and forth. Look at the waves produced when this harmonic motion is traced onto a moving surface. Mathematicians call it a sine curve. As we'll see, A vibrating object, such as an electron or a tuning fork, emits energy in the form of these sine curve waves. So, in the next lesson, let's take a closer look at the anatomy of these waves. Good energy. (laughs) 